up, everybody? Thank you for joining us on another rendition of Smack That. Smectacular. A uh, non-applicable recap of SmackDown here on the NA Podcast. Uh, I'm Chubbs. One take. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, na.podcast919. One take and I are there as well. Also, while you're here, like, share, subscribe, comment. Not that you care. Uh, yeah, pretty much. So, SmackDown from Tuesday, 30th. May 30th in Atlanta. Sorry, SmackDown Live, because that is the name of the show. In the A, A. I wish we had rights to music. I'd totally throw that in there. Oh, you kind of did. Yeah, but <laughs> one, uh, one take rendition. So, impromptu, quick little recap before we talk about the show. Quick little impromptu, Sammy and Shinsuke versus Baron and KO, where Sammy and Shinsuke get the win. Uh, women's number one contender match, which was a five-way elimination, turned out to be no contest. Uh, Shane then made it into a Money in the Bank ladder match for Money in the Bank. I have my thoughts on this. Uh, Brizango versus the Colones. Brizango get the win. Colons. And uh, AJ Styles versus Dolph Ziggler, where Dolph Ziggler gets a reported, well, uh, not reported, a, they're calling it a much-needed win from the things I've read. Uh, full disclosure, I did not get to watch SmackDown live, or not live, because... My cable box, thank you AT&T, decided to only record the final 30 minutes. So weird. I hate AT&T. And there, there was nothing else that recorded that pushed it or anything? I had other things. I had Prison Break recording at 9. But yeah, that would have... But I can have two things recording and watch another thing. Yeah, see, I can have two recording, but I have to watch one. Uh, I can have two recording and I can watch a third. Uh, I could technically record three if I'm watching one. Right. But yeah, nothing was recording <laughs> from 8 to 9.30. Yeah, it's just weird that it recorded only the last half hour. I, it's, I'm telling you, it's AT&T. Um, so... Kicking off SmackDown Live, um, some back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back promos for <laughs> Charlotte, Carmella, Natalia, Becky, and Tamina about how they're going to win the yeah. win the number one contenders match. That, that was the order of them that I wrote them down. Um, then we had Kevin <laughs> Owens doing his highlight reel where his guest was Shinsuke Nakamura. He's actually getting normal heel heat now. It's been more so ever since the. Oh, Kevin Owens. Yeah, yeah. Ever since Sorry, the Jericho. Sorry, I at the wrong time. Yeah. Ever since the Jericho feud, he's, he's getting, actually getting legit heel heat. Yeah, because before that, no heel heat. He was a heel, but everyone was like, "Yeah, Kevin Owens is the best." And then he turned on Ke- on Jericho, and they're like, "How could you?" Uh, speaking of Jericho, still the best. He may not ever come back, but we'll talk about that on it's our been, rumors it's, episode. It's BS. Uh. He's done this before. Every other time he's gone gone on quitsies for a while. Yeah. When he's asked questions about it, he tries to basically troll the fans. Uh, so he's just like, no, I'm never, I'm, not, I'm fine if I never go back. I probably won't. He does it that way. Oh. And we're like, oh, no. All right. Well, cool on him then. Yeah. Um, not, not to, like, digress, but do you think, like, this last year leading up to, like, right now has been, like, one of the best for Jericho? Like, him personally? Like, how he like feels just, about it? Yeah, just, like, overall, because I think he ended up going over way more than he figured he would. Oh, for especially sure. Especially with the list, the stuff with Kevin Owens. Fozzie, I lis- I try to listen to at least one of their songs all the, like, each time I've heard they've got a new one coming out. I've never liked any of them. Right. Judas, like it. The video was kind of weird. Yeah. But the song itself is is a decent song. And, like, it was... It's in the top, like, two or three in rock. Yeah, it's got, like, four million views on... I think YouTube it's got, like, right ten now. million sold or something like that. 
I don't remember. I saw the number the other day. He posted a, a thing on, on Instagram for it, and I saw it, and I was like, I was just thinking to myself, do you think, like, he's just had this whole, like, train of awesome where he was just so over. It may have helped. Yeah, that's true, too. But, yeah, but I can usually break them apart, and, like, if I don't like the song, I don't, you know, as far as Fozzy, like, if I don't like the music, I don't like the music, and I actually like the Judas song. Yeah, I like it. Uh, he has a song, Sandpaper, which features M Shadows from Avenged Sevenfold. I like that one. But other than that, I, I'm not really a Fozzy fan. You know somebody whose music's worse? Mine? Frank, Frank Kazarian. Who? Frank Kazarian? Ring of Honor? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So bad. <laughs> so bad. Wait, he's in a band? Yeah. I don't even want to know. They did literally they sound like horrible 80s rock. Does he do it's his so own bad. entrance music? Huh? Does he do his own entrance music? I don't know. Hmm. I can never... I, well, I shouldn't say never. I can very rarely hear their, their entrance music good enough. So, uh, we have Baron Corbin interrupt the Kevin Owens highlight reel. Why? Because Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin. Um. <laughs> There's actually. You are, wait, you already went through and did the results, right? Yeah. Okay, so I can digress now. It was actually kind of funny because he came out and said, I don't know why you guys, why anyone's talking about you right now. They should be talking about me and my highlights. And then it was just showing him beating the crap out of Sammy last, last week. And Kevin Owens goes, Really? That's your highlight reel? You beat the crap out of Sami Zayn for two minutes? I've been beating the crap out of him for 15 years. <laughs> uh, Kevin should have made a reference to his hair. <laughs> they, they, keep, they did it last week and this week where they're referring to um, Kevin Owens' as smack, their WWE's Cartman. Yeah. I don't know if the, like maybe there's an inside joke in there or, or it, something. I think it's probably something backstage. Somebody was like, hey, you know what? You kind of look like Cartman. Yeah, because AJ said it last week, right? Yeah. And then um, Kevin, after Kevin said, I've been beating AJ up, or beating uh, Sammy up for 15 years, so what do you do about you? He's like, get the hell, this is my show. Get the hell off from my stage. And Baron said, what? You trying to tell me I'm supposed to respect your authority? Is that right, Cartman? <laughs> That's funny. And Kevin looked pit. He's just like, Ugh. and then he said something to Shinsuke. Then Shinsuke said something to him, and then onward. <laughs> um, Shinsuke. I'm pretty sure he attacked them first. Okay, I'm going off. I'm going off one takes notes, everybody, because like I said, I didn't get to watch. Uh, Shinsuke attacked both Baron and Kevin Owens. They end up. Gaining the upper hand as it's a numbers game. Uh, and then Sammy came out through the crowd. Yeah. Like, you know where the, where the hard camera is? Yeah. If the, if they were actually using the hard camera, he would have came out from that side. That's weird. The angle he came in was kind of weird. Anyway, uh, Sammy proposes that they have a tag match. Cut to Sammy and Shinsuke versus Baron Corbin and Kevin Owens. Where Sammy and Shinsuke get the win. Yeah, it was kind of a, a hectic uh, ending. You had it where Shinsuke was in, in the ring. <sighs> Baron somehow ends up in the corner. Kevin Owens turned to go towards Shinsuke. And then Shinsuke pushed him into Baron Corbin. But Baron Corbin had his, like, he was facing the corner, so Kevin Owens ran into his back. Mm -hmm. So he turned around. It was one of the times where there was contact where it made sense for the person to be pissed at as a teammate because right. he didn't know what happened. He's like, what the hell are you doing? Not like Roman and Seth, too. Right, ago. where you're facing each other. You know exactly what happened. Right. These guys weren't. And Baron's like, what the hell are you doing? And Kevin was like, the hell with you? And, like, pushed him. <laughs> and uh, Baron let loose and punched him. Hit him, hit him perfect in the right spot where it actually looked like he hit him good. It wasn't a patop, but it was a, like a, a – they sold it well. And KO, KO sold it like he got knocked the out. Like he hit the deck and just huh. – And then Sammy came out of nowhere and took Baron Corbin over the top rope. 
And then Shinsuke came through with his uh, his knee. You know the move. I can't remember the oh, move. The right kin, now. Uh, Shin Shin Kinshasa. Shin, Shinkasa. Yeah. Well, I keep hearing it differently. I call it the Kinshasa because that makes more sense in my head. But Shinkasa makes sense because his name's Shin and he's using his shin. Yeah. I don't know. Either way, that one he knocked KO out and pinned him for the second week in a row. Okay. Uh, so the Usos were in the ring doing a promo. And Usos? Another good heel promo. Um, finally, the return of... Dude, this is how dumb I am. I was watching it. Forgot who was coming. Yeah. Who was... The New Day? New Day? I totally forgot. So the Usos were basically saying, you know, we own the tag division. Nobody's beating us. Oh, you thought American Alpha was going to beat us? Nope. <laughs> you thought... Uh, somebody else was going to beat us? Nope. You thought Breezango was going to beat us? Nope. And then, obviously, since they were in Atlanta, it's like, and you thought Atlanta was going to beat the Patriots? Nope. <laughs> That's so funny. And then cut to, it's a new day. Okay. Uh, they had a pretty solid back and forth. All right. Big E is hilarious as usual. I'm going to have to watch the Hulu version. Because um, <laughs> you remember... Was it last week the Usos were saying it was the Usos pe- Uso Penitentiary? Yeah. They were playing into it. Be, they were running the jail or whatnot. So Big E, well, the New Day were playing like they were talking like they were the big guys in the prison. And <laughs> big E goes, we see them belts. We likes them. And we want them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Big E is uh, quality. And uh, Xavier was funny. Kofi looked like he was looking looking healthy. He was didn't look like he had any. I mean, obviously he wasn't doing any in ring, but he was doing his normal running and skipping and jumping and stuff. And he looked all right. That's what's up. Uh, care don't care. Fashion files. Uh, it's funny. Take your word for it. They'll probably cut it out of Hulu. You can probably find it on YouTube though. Yeah, might be able to find it on the. I will say this, I don't, well, I've said this before anyways, but like, sm- talking smack, I don't like that I am watching your show and then I have to go watch another one of your shows right. on your stuff. Like, I get the point of you're trying to get traffic to your thing, to your your uh, app or network, whatever the hell you want to call it. Yeah. I fully understand that. So, even though I don't like it, I can understand it. One thing I don't like is segments that they only have on their dot com or only on their YouTube channel that actually will give you like good information or good like parts to help build characters. Right. That you don't see otherwise. Like I'm not going like when I'm on YouTube I already have specific stuff that I'm watching in the time that I have. I'm not trying to add more to it that you should just find a way to incorporate into your show instead of showing me repeat friggin' information that I've already seen. Agreed. I agree with you. Uh, so, the women's number one contender match was the five-way elimination, as predicted by one take, and I'm sure many others, that it was not going to end in any sort of way, but having air, having the announcement made that they'll do a Money in the Bank, first ever women's Money in the Bank match. All right. It was actually, so so everyone came out, and they, they kind of had it like they have had where it, it was just, it was uh, Charlotte and um, Becky kind of face-to-face with the other three, pushing each other and yelling, and the ref was kind of in between them. And the right. ref didn't even get to ring the, ring the bell, and they all just started beating the crap out of each other. And the whole time, the ref's like, no, we haven't even started the match. <laughs> so a couple of them ended up outside of the ring. And then the ref's like, come on, guys, get it in the ring. Everybody in the ring. And then everyone out ended up outside the ring. They all kicked the crap out of each other. One thing they did that I didn't like that I got the point behind it, but it was just stupid, is Natalia started out, or was it, no, Tamina started out where she cleaned off the announcer's table and, like, she ripped out the, uh, the monitors. And then she grabbed Charlotte and was going to try to put her through it, but Charlotte got the upper hand, knocked her down. Then 
there, there was some fighting going on amongst them, and then Natalia got the upper hand on Charlotte. She went over to the table that had already been cleared off and cleared it off, like put her hands on it and pretended like she was pushing stuff off of it. Right. When it was pretty much already cleared off. So she basically just grabbed a pencil and a water bottle and threw it. And then she tried to put Charlotte through it. Charlotte got the upper hand on her. Then there was some more fighting back and forth outside the ring with all of them, where basically all five of them got the upper hand on each other, where it was like a straight line, one person hit the other, domino effect. Whoever did the hitting got hit next. And then Charlotte decided to go over to the announcer's table and clear off what had already been cleared off. And then she picked up uh, Natalia and powerbombed her through it, which was pretty sweet. And then they're all laying on the outside by the announcer's table because that's kind of where they all were beaten up. Um, Shane O'Mac came out and announced that since they had a lot of fight in them and obviously they didn't even wait for the match to get started, they do the first Money in the Bank females match for the number one contendership. Okay. So Before that match happened research. and I'd heard that there might be a Money in the Bank for the women, I was just like, ugh. But when I saw what they were doing for that short period of them kicking the crap at each other, it made me okay with them having the Money in the Bank match. There was also a cool spot where, because Becky and Carmella were beating the crap out of each other, Becky took Carmella and threw her over the um, barricade into the, the timekeeper's station, and then she climbed up on the barrier and ran across it to jump and attack Carmella. Yeah. Thought that was kind of cool. I don't do, they don't do that enough. But that's all I got for that. All right. Here's my problem with, with Money in the Bank. Uh, historically, uh, like, I'm, I'm looking at the history of Money in the Bank. Oh, I was just wondering what you were doing. Historically. It's usually six, right? Actually, it's usually... Like, 8 to 10. See, I thought that, too. And then you and I and B were talking about it. And either you or he said it was usually 6 yeah. or more. And I always remembered it being, like... I always thought it was, like, 10, 8 or 10. There's a, there's several with 6. Several, most of them with 8 or 10. Only one with 5. I just... I don't know. I, I think my issue with it is that I... Th- I think it's going to be a terrible match. The women's one? The women's money in the bank. I'm I'm not going to disagree with it. I'm going to, like I said, after seeing the, the match Tuesday, I'm okay with at least giving it a chance before where I was like, ugh. And I said this before uh, we started recording. Fun fact. Yeah. For those that don't know. Right. The Revival, their theme music, the lyrics were actually done by Natalia. I don't know if people know that. <laughs> Say yeah. Best there ever was, best there ever will be. And of course it was done right after she finished her full carton of smokes. It's totally got a smoker's voice. Um I don't know, I just think it's gonna be a terrible match. I'm, like I said, if if I hadn't saw the seen the match that occurred, I was fully on like oh, I don't wanna see this. Um but I'm willing to willing to give it a a little try ski. The old college try. Ski. Um, so Brizango defeated <laughs> the Colognes. That match was, was... This match was similar to the pay-per-view one with the gimmicks for Tyler. Yeah. And this is why they should have had them do it on regular SmackDown, not pay-per-view. Because the pay-per-view ruined the match for me, more or less. Yeah. It didn't completely ruin it, but it took me out of it because I was just like... This is what should have been the go-home episode, not the pay-per-view. The pay-per-view should have been the box of their gimmicks sitting in the corner just as, pray, you know, paying homage yeah. to it so people would be like, oh, okay. Right. It wasn't uh, a bad match, though. Obviously, didn't expect the Colons to win. Yeah, because they're back to jobber status. Yeah, they had one day that showed them tough. <sighs> they should just, they should probably leave WWE and go to a different promotion. About American Alpha, bro. They're they're beating everybody. Oh, that's right. We haven't seen them in like a month. They should leave and go to like Ring of Honor. Go back to NXT. Yeah. Do a switch off with them and AOP. Yeah, I mean, 
I find no issue with teams or solo competitors dropping back down to NXT. Isn't that kind of the point of having a uh, JV program? Yeah, like, oh, well, you're, you're in a slump, not performing too well. Head on down to NXT, get your bearings. Get some comments back, work on some new stuff, maybe yeah. work on a new gimmick. Beat up the Velveteen Dream. Um, did you wa- did you watch that NXT? Yeah. I feel like if it wasn't for his gimmick, I'd probably like him. That's exactly my thought on it. It's so off-putting, and I know people are going to be like, oh, because it's, it's kind of gay, homophobic. No, it has nothing to do with that. Nope. Could care less about that. It's off-putting because it's obnoxious. Yeah. Especially, he's a new guy coming out. He's not supposed to be a heel. So it's not like he's supposed to be getting obnoxious heel heat. He's yeah. just coming out with his gimmick. He's basically the extremely cat crappy version of Dalton Castle. Yeah. Ring of Honor. Yeah. Him, at first, I was like, Ugh. And the more I see him, A, he's good in the ring. His promos are funny. Yeah. The stuff he does is funny. So it's not off-putting where the Velveteen Dream is friggin' duck lips. By the way, I'm referring to him as VD. <laughs> Fitting, probably. Mainly because it's just funny to me. But uh, did you see his elbow drop? Yeah. Dude. It was a good elbow drop. That was, yeah. Yeah. Because Bailey's going to have to stop doing hers. No, no. He can't use that. Was, once Bailey's. I saw him do that, I was just like, oh, that's awesome. No, stop. Can't do it ever again. Have we mentioned that on our other show? Yeah. Hojo can't do hers because Bailey has the elbow drop. So. That she's used once? Well, she's used it twice, but it's not even a, she used it once as a finisher and once just to use it. I don't even remember the other time. I just remember WrestleMania was the first time I've you seen could, her do You it. could be right. I just, in my head, I'm picturing her doing it twice. She may have done it in NXT. I don't think so. But I didn't watch too much of it. Main roster, NXT. she's done it. No, you're probably right. She's probably only done it the one time. It's WrestleMania. Yeah. And I, I don't get, what, what, why, why is it? She's done a splash quite a bit. Well, so my whole thing is, what, what, what's so special about hers that no one else can do it? It's like, everyone does a super kick. Right. Dolph's is technically, his is, excuse me, hiccups here. Dolph's, is, his super kick is the finisher. Yeah, it's not sweet, sweet chin music. It's not the name of it, but no, it but still... he sets it up the same way. Exactly. Where he tunes up the band. Yeah. Yeah, I just... Why, why are they just subjectively picking who, in, who can and can't do certain moves... They that another hurt, person does. They don't want to hurt Bailey's feelings. I'm actually, I'm remotely a Bailey fan of her in-ring work. I oh. don't like her character. A lot of people said that it was really done well in NXT. I didn't watch too, too much of her in NXT because I wasn't watching them. But the times I've gone back, I like her in the ring. But the gimmick, they, they said, in, a lot of people say in NXT it got over because it was relatable. It's not relatable to me. So I'm not aw shucks. Yeah, like, you can only be the, the aw shucks, you know, person for so long until, like, there has to be an a, a adaption. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you adapt to it and then. Being it, awestruck because you're living your childhood dream only the, lasts so the long. The novelty of it is over. Yeah, it's not a lifelong gimmick. Right. Three years down the road. Right. You're past that. That's you know what I m- love them to do is have her have this the, the match with Alexa at Extreme Rules. Have her win it like viciously, like she just snaps and just just beats the crap out of. Ale- I don't. I, I'd rather she lose and then snaps. Yeah, but e- either way, they need to do something different with her character. And I know right now they're looking at it as a she's kid friendly. And she's selling a lot of merch, and that's their big thing. <sighs> they had the same I'm thing. So, was, I'm so, I'm so bored with her. Bray and, and John Cena. Uh, Bray wanted Cena to snap and hit him with a chair several times. And right. Cena would have the chair in his hand, and then he would just wouldn't do it, and he'd drop it. Like, you're not losing... That doesn't necessarily make you a heel if you use a weapon. Spe- speaking of... Speaking of not a heel but should be, I forgot to bring this up on our, our Raw episode. I don't know if you noticed or not, Roman's interview, do you hear how he ended it? Yes. Because it was, it was Mike Rome that, that interviewed him, 
after he said what he said, he's like, now beat it, Rome. And I was like, what face talks like this? Yeah. Just turn, just do a full heel turn for the man. Well, nobody likes Mike anyway. Mike Tom, Mike, Tom, Tom, Mike. Tom, Tom, Mike. He's a good guy in real life. Does that count? No. Oh, okay. Uh. I forgot where we were because we got sidetracked with. No, oh, we, we finished up uh, Brazango versus the Colognes. Oh, yeah, it was a decent match overall. You didn't see that's another one you didn't get to see, right? Right. I was explaining it to you before we started recording. I'll try to do it real quick. I didn't see any of it <clears> because I I. Well, I watched Orton when he did his promo. Right. And then Jinder came on the on the Jumbotron. Right. And then I started to watch... AJ Dolph. AJ Dolph, but... I realized that I had missed the first hour and a half, so I just I deleted it. <laughs> Matt Hardy style. Um, well, so... Tyler Breeze came out still dressed... Like, he had his ring attire on, but he had the skirt dress thing he was wearing and the fashion files on over it and a wig and Fandango had his trench coat and P.I. hat on started the, the match out with Tyler Breeze in the ring whatever the cologne was didn't want to hit he, they were laughing at him basically he's like what the hell is this and then he hit him and ripped the wig off and ripped the, the dress off and threw it and Breeze kind of, Breeze kind of got the upper hand and then I think they went back and forth for a little bit. Not very long, but either way. Kind of got the upper hand. Tagged in uh, Fandango. He was in the ring for what seemed like forever. And then he went to... He either went to get a tag to Tyler, and one of the Colons beat him over there and knocked Tyler off from the apron. Or he was just... Fandango was on the mat. I don't remember. Either way, he knocked he knocked Tyler Breeze off the mat. So there was like two or three times where Fandango went over to get a tag, and they were just saying he's got nobody to get a tag because Tyler's been knocked out. And the whole time I'm thinking, I was like, what are they trying to do here? Because it's not like he got hit any harder than anyone else ever has before, knocked off the ring. What? It was like ten plus minutes where he wasn't on the apron. Right. Then all of a sudden, cut to Tyler comes out from under the ring. He wasn't outside the ring. He was under the ring, changing a tire. He comes up onto the apron just as Carl the janitor, which I instantly laughed, and I was like, that's just stupid. No wonder he was gone for so long. But how hard is it to put on overalls, a uh, skull cap, and a fake mustache? Yeah. I mean, I know there's not much room under the ring, but it's not like he's that big of a guy. Either way, he got the upper hand. Then he ended up, either way, they won. Tyler Breeze and Fandango. All right. Um, and AJ versus Dolph in the, the main event. Decent match. I mean, it's, it's AJ and, Should have been. and Dolph. Yeah. Dolph's, Dolph's uh, promo this week was much better than it has been. He's, instead of doing the old school Jericho slow talk and everything, He's actually been talking at a normal pace so he doesn't sound like a waterhead. But it started out because AJ had his interview in the back. I think it was Renee that was interviewing him. I don't remember. Doesn't really matter. He was just... I don't remember what he was saying, but either way, Dolph came and interrupted him. <clears throat> and basically was just antagonizing him and saying, you know, I was, I've ar- I'm the only one that's in the Money in the Bank match this year that's won it and cashed it in and been the world champion. Right. And uh, he was kind of, he was getting in AJ's face. He's like, oh, you want to go now, AJ? You want to go now, P1? <laughs> and I was like just giving him a hard time. So AJ like rips his shirt off. He's like, yeah, let's do it. He goes, yeah, whatever. We'll see you in the ring. We'll go. We'll go. See you later, cupcake. Something like that. And AJ was just like, whatever. Jerk. <laughs> it's not what he said, but that's what I said. Uh, but yeah, the match was match was decent. I think it was technically a botched ending. I'm saying that on a guess, not on how it looked. Because AJ was outside on the apron and he was <clears throat> he was setting up for his phenomenal forearm, and when he went to springboard in, Dolph I can't remember if Dolph hit his foot or hit the ropes, but either way, knocked him off the ropes. And I think what was supposed to happen is AJ was supposed to land on the top rope and stay on the top rope, like on his groin. 
and play that, you know, kind of buoy on it. Right. And then I think Dolph was supposed to super kick him and he was either supposed to fall in the ring or some crap like that. But either way, he landed on the, the rope weird and he basically like ping-ponged through all three ropes all the way down to the mat. <laughs> but he was holding onto the ropes all weird to, and that's why it made me think that it was technically a botch. But he ended up like st- staggering up using the rope so he at least sold it and he was like holding his groin and still trying to you know get up and he had one foot over the bottom rope and was holding the top rope and was staggering and uh Dolph super kicked him knocked him cold beat him which I mean it was in Atlanta so I expected AJ to lose he never went at home even though as Chubb said well earlier before we were recording that they're more apt to do it on the regular show as opposed to pay-per-views. but Yeah. Um, I just think that since Dolph is in the position he's in, having been the only one to have won the match or even have been in one before, they're going to they're gonna push him as the strongest in the weeks leading up to the pay-per-view. Yeah. I'm also trying to break it up of, like, everyone that's in the Money in the Bank. I'm trying to break it up because off on like so I'm confusing myself already I'm basically trying to break there's six of them in there so that means you have three one on one matches yeah so I'm trying to break it apart on like alright these guys already have a feud that's going to further these guys do these guys do this these guys kind of don't so these guys will be the two that stand the largest chance of winning money in the bank yeah deal. That's going to be barren. I mean, it's it's a smart bet. I mean, I don't know why not. Because they already have AJ supposed to have his rematch with Kevin, right? Sometime yeah. they haven't announced that yet. But that'll probably keep going for a little bit. Right. But the only problem being is that whoever wins it is going to hold on to the, case, the briefcase for a long time. Yeah, and probably until at least WrestleMania. Probably. Now it's about they're not doing an Indian tour this year, an India tour. Yeah, I heard that they just they they have a another channel over there that is going to be showing their weekly show to like seven hundred million more people. Well, I also read too, and this Whoa, is Mojo. sorry, this is where it doesn't make sense. Cause <clears throat> the the idea was to help promote the network in India, right, and promote the the shop, right, by giving Jinder the belt, right. In India, they have a television network that gives them the pay-per-views for free. Really? Yeah. <laughs> they have no need to buy the network. Because, granted, I bought the network for the pay-per-views. Right. And then happened to start watching some of the original programming. Right. A bunch of it's good. I can't think of anybody... I can't imagine anybody said to themselves, you know what, they have a lot of really good quality programming, original programming. I'll go, I'll buy the network, and as an added bonus, I get to watch the pay-per-views for $10 a month. No way that that was the thought process. Yeah, I mean, unless you got enough people that really like NXT, which NXT and the pay-per-views would be enough for me. Right. If I had the money. Yeah. And then added the shows, especially with... Well, see, that's the thing. I wish they did, like, you know, Ride Along. Yeah. I wish they'd have, like, fan favorites where they'd have Ride Along Part 2. Because I would love to see Luke and Carl again. Yeah. And again. And then another time. You know, Luke is in, Luke's on, um, what's that, uh, Corey Graves show, the Superstar Inc. Yeah. Yeah, he's on... Though I don't know if it's the one that already came out this week or it's one that's coming out. Oh, they're doing that. They're adding more. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I mean, they could take Luke and Anderson just for an example and follow them. Dude, over they the could have their. Of they could have. They could have their own show. They could be like Edge and Christian and just <laughs> have their own weird show. Yeah, that too. But the ride-alongs could be over the course of like a month. Yeah, instead of just doing like. It's supposed to be a half an hour show, but it's, what, only like 20, 25 minutes? Yeah. And it's four different people. Well, sometimes more, but it's two different Usually groups. like two vehicles, yeah. Yeah, it's two groups. So you get like 10 minutes a piece. Yeah. How is that? How are you selling anything? Well, see, my other thing is it's on your own network. You can make it as long as you want. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it should be a full half an hour, not it's billed to be a 30-minute show that's only 20 minutes. Right. It could easily be an hour-long show where you get a half an hour of both vehicles. Yeah. Because I've, I've watched the, the, the one with Carl and Luke like two or three times. It's just as funny every time. <laughs> Hup. Hup. Okay, brother. These freaking guys. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I, I agree with you, but it just, I just found it weird that A, they're not doing the India tour, and B, over in India, they're getting the pay-per-views for free, so they have no really, no real need to buy. No incentive. Yeah. Yeah. So why push gender? Throw the Indian people bomb. It's still good publicity. Stop it, WWE. Go home. You're drunk. Like I said, I'm probably one of the few people that... I'm still okay with Jinder winning it just because Orton's run has been so boring. If it was somebody like AJ that had the belt or Bray, if he was still there and they lost it to Jinder, I'd be more pissed. But at least with uh, Jinder having it, they can do more with Jinder. Like, they could have done more with, with Randy if they weren't randomly pushing Luke Harper and then not and then they do and then they don't especially with Eric Rowan being back right there's a bunch they could do with that but they're not going to because they're idiots so at least with gender they have options of of matches a you've got a possibility of a feud with everybody that was in the original number one contendership that he won yeah you've got the possible feud with Rusev when he comes back which is organically makes sense and then, obviously, the rematch and short feud with Randy immediately after. Yeah. I will say this. Did you actually watch Randy's promo? Yes. It's one of his better ones in a long time. Agreed. Even with his little botch where he couldn't think of God rest his soul. Yeah. His, re- re- his soul's rest it. <laughs> yeah. Orton, uh, Orton's one of those guys that messes up a lot on the mic. I think he was kind of getting excited about what he wanted, like, mentally getting, like, and, like, yeah. trying to be angry, and he stuttered all over. There was one time he was in the ring with, I think, Seamus, and you can see him look at Seamus, and he goes, I forgot my lines. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and Seamus, like, leans in, and he's like, you're supposed to say whatever. <laughs> and he, you, you see Randy visibly, like, oh, yeah, and then he, Duh. Then he uh, presents his lines. Um, That's funny, actually. So we still got a ways for Money in the Bank. Three weeks. Yeah. Terrible. That's just, I'm just... It's going to be bad. Hmm. That's all I got. You got anything else? Hmm? You got anything else? Um, so, this SmackDown, second week in a row of doing picture-in-picture picture instead of going to commercial. Yeah. They did it for two matches. The main event not being one of them. And I've been starting to count commercials. How many, How many? like, I remember when, when I was first, well, I shouldn't say first, just growing up watching TV in general and then, like, watching wrestling. I remember commercials. There was usually, like, three, maybe four commercials. Yeah, about 30 seconds apiece. So, like, two minutes. Yeah, 30 seconds apiece. Sometimes you'd have one that was a minute depending on the commercial, but they were, that was it. Yeah. How many commercials, and don't go exaggerating just because I'm asking this question. Like, <laughs> l- legitimately, if you're watching wrestling, there's going to be, you know, a commercial break in the middle of a match. Knowing that we're at a point where they're getting money for the commercials, and there's going to be a little bit more. How many would be like, all right, I, that, that makes sense even though I didn't want them? Like, five? Yeah, like, I was going to say five. There's what? probably, like, what, eight? During the picture in pictures, I counted nine for one of them. Seven for the other. And then during the AJ match, without picture-in-picture, picture, there was one commercial break that had nine commercials. How many of them were for the WWE Network? None. Surprising. They did have some in other commercial breaks, though. But those were ones in between matches anyway, so it didn't really matter. Right. Because they had, like, one or two for the uh, Extreme Rules. And then they had... Well, they had different... Two two or three different ones for the Extreme Rules, but... Yeah. 
I also wish that I get why they're they're gonna get false information back for the picture in picture. They're gonna get numbers back saying that more people stayed watching, which is accurate, but it's still a false thing. Because like I don't fast forward or change the channel because it's still on, but that doesn't mean that I'm still not annoyed. Right. You know, especially I wish they'd find a way to have a little bit of the wrestling picture have volume. Even if it was just minor. Like I don't want I don't even care if I hear the announcers like don't have them talk, just have it be the actual match, like, you know, the sound of the pounding on the mat and yeah. stuff like that. Just the, the ambiance of the match. It doesn't have to be loud because you don't want the commercial to be overshadowed. But I feel like it being a picture in picture and it being completely quiet you still want me to see what's going on, yet I'm having a hard time not focusing on what's louder. Right. No, I'm the same way. I, I wouldn't even mind if during the match when there's a lull, the also, announce, also the announce team says, like, you know, this match is brought to you by... KFC. Snickers. Yeah, whatever. That's definitely what they should do for NXT. And yes. they should do for their pay-per-views. It's on a network that's already being paid for. Yeah. And the commercials you're having are for your own product. Right. Why are you interrupting matches to, to advertise your own product when you could be doing that organically? Yeah, do it before the event starts, like that little load-up video, Yeah. and then do it after the event when everybody's going to tune it out anyway. Right. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, na.podcast919. We are there as well. Like, share, and subscribe on YouTube. Comment, what have you converse talk to us i don't know how many other ways i can say that so deuce